Hello, this is Sean Mullery from Electronic Engineering in IT Sligo. And in this short lesson, I'm just going to be explaining to you about the anatomy of a C program. In other words, what uh, is involved in the C program. Um, this is a C program that we, we wrote in a previous lesson uh, where I was showing you how to work the compiler. It's just a, a very simple hello world program. And as promised, I'm going to explain to you what some of the different parts of that are now. Okay. Now, the most important thing in any C program is the main function. OK, um, main is so important that you, you can't go and call something else main. It's it's one of the keywords that are used uh, in C. Therefore, you can't use it yourself later on if you want to use it for something else. The other thing as well is that you, you can make enormous C programs. And oftentimes um, there will be hundreds of programmers all working on the one very large program, uh, which can be separated across different files and so on. But the important thing is that there can only be one main function amongst them all. So somebody has to be responsible for that main function. And the program begins at the beginning of, of that main function and it ends at the end of that main function. So no matter what anybody else writes elsewhere to do with this, it must in some way be called from that main function. So what you can do is as you're going down through the main function, you can make a call to something else and you can set off and you can go and do uh, that particular function or that particular job, but you must come back to the main function uh, and then you can go off and do something else if you want and come back again. But the important thing is that the program will not end until you get to the very end of the main function. And once you do, you're finished. It, the, the thing stops at that point. So the main function is very, very important. We're doing something very simplistic in this uh, in this program, but there are other cases where there could be millions of lines of code. There might only be a very small number of those lines are actually inside the main function, but from there, everything else is called. And it should be, um, you know, I should know, note at this point that you you can have something called for main that calls something else that calls something else that calls something else that can go a long way away but it must come back through all of those levels and get back to main that's vitally important um so so uh, you know it doesn't have to be called directly from main it can be called from something else that's called from something else that's called from main um but you you must be able to get your way back as well okay so there's one main function that's important and the uh, we use the terminology brace for th for this little section here that uh, that I've highlighted there. There's those curly brackets, and there's an opening curly bracket at the beginning of main and a closing curly bracket at the end of main. Um, and other functions use this as well. Um, and that that tells the the compiler that that is the beginning of main and the other the closing one is the end of main. One of the things that's very important when you're writing your computer programs is to get your number of braces correct, that you have the right number of opening ones and closing ones, uh, and that you don't get confused about where they begin and end. And that's why it's vitally important that you adhere to certain um, neatness criteria that I'll be showing you uh, as we write uh, future programs. OK, so you have a beginning and an end there. The the main function. Um, the main function is you know, when we create this little piece of software, which is an executable file, which you don't need a compiler for. A, a, you know, after you've created that, you don't need to have a dev C compiler otherwise on your computer. You could give that executable to somebody else um, and they can run it. What happens is it starts at the beginning of main and continues on to the end. But if we wanted to pass some information to that program when it was running, we could do it inside these brackets here. Now, for the majority of the programs that I'll be showing you, we will not be passing any information, but just to, uh, to, into, into the main function, we will with other functions, uh, but just to explain to you that that's why that's there. It's uh, it, to offer the ability that if somebody wants to run your program uh, and they want to send it some information before they do, that's where you would pass it in there. The other thing as well is that what normally runs your program is uh, an operating system such as Microsoft Windows or you might have the Mac operating system or uh, a Linux operating system or some other type of thing like that. And when the program is finished, um, the operating system uh, sometimes wants to know, did everything run correctly or not? In other, did, in other words, did some error occur? For example, you know, uh, you might have a program that accesses the printer driver or something like that that wants to print something out. And if it couldn't get access to it, let's say the printer didn't exist or it wasn't connected or something like that, you'd like to be able to tell the operating system, you know, the program failed and it, and it failed because something went wrong. In that case, what we do is we return some information to the computer. OK, so we're returning a zero in this case, and that's kind of code to the operating system for everything ran perfectly. In other words, if we got to this point, everything ran fine. We didn't have to finish earlier or anything. And this is directly linked to this here. 
what this says is that the main function is going to return an integer to us. That integer happens to be zero in this case, but if we had a more complex problem where something could go wrong, we might return a one or a two or a three, each of these codes meaning something to the operating system that, call, that, uh, that called it. Again, it's not something we're going to do uh, very often, mostly we're just going to be doing a return zero, but there are situations later on where I might be getting you to write information to a file or something like that, and if the file didn't exist or it couldn't be opened or it couldn't be written to, you want to end your program right there and then and say, my program didn't run correctly, I'm returning a one or returning a two, uh, and then the operating system will know. So that's what this int is for here at the beginning of main. It says um, main is going to return an integer to, to you when it's finished. A little bit like if you send anybody off to do a job, you want them to come back with some sort of feedback or you want them to come back with something in particular. Now, the, the other things that are here are the, um, You'll notice that up the top here, there's a little bit of information and it's in green. You can clearly tell that there's something slightly different about this. These are libraries that are available. So as well as, and I mentioned in a previous video that um, the C programming language only has 32 actual keywords that it uses, but it has lots of functions that, that uh, the compiler writers have written to allow us to do very standard things that we might want to do. This particular one is for STD, which stands for standard, and IO, which stands for input and output. In other words, the standard things that we want to do to input information and to output information. And uh, we do that by using the hash include, um, the hash include uh, word here, which is part of a thing called the preprocessor. And uh, it then goes and it finds this file, this header file, which has all the information about the standard input output functions that we have and it makes that available to the rest of the program. We're not using all of those standard input output uh, functions, we're only using one of them, it's called the printf function, that's it here. Okay. Now, strictly speaking, if I don't include this, uh, if I don't include this hash include up the top, if I, if I don't have that there, my compiler should get annoyed at me and say, I have no idea what printf is, I've never heard of it, I've never seen it before. Many of the compilers are actually kind of designed to make things a little bit too easy on us these days, and it may decide, oh yeah, you know, do you know what? You need this STDIO for that. I'm going to put it in myself, even though you've forgotten. That's all fine, well, uh, for the odd time we might accidentally forget. But the problem is that when you write your C program, it's supposed to be you're supposed to be able to take that, bring it somewhere else, and uh, compile it on another machine for another type of microprocessor. And uh, if that other compiler decides that no you need that stdio.h i don't know what printf is and um, then your program won't work so it's important to stick to the rules even though sometimes you can get away without them uh, with some compilers so the printf function uh, is one that you'll be using a lot and it's the way that we actually uh, talk back to the user to tell them what's going on in many cases we'll just be doing calculations and so on but we want to report back to the user maybe the result of our calculation or something like that, and therefore we need to print it to the screen. If we were to write all the computer code that it takes to put different pixels on the screen to black and to white and all the information to send that up the, uh, up the data communications channels to the screen, that would actually take a considerable amount of C, programs, uh, C programming um, code in order to do that so thankfully a lot of that work uh, that standard work has already been done in these libraries you'll find there are other libraries that we'll come across before too long and um, a math library is very there's a very useful one which has all the sine cos tan square root all those sort of ones so that we don't actually have to implement those ourselves okay the printf and we'll be doing a full video on that later on but the printf in this case just does a it prints out hello world onto the screen and that's what pops up there as i mentioned here this uh, this function here the system pause that's what causes the thing to say i'm stopping for a minute because i want to make sure that you saw the previous thing that i put out on the screen um and so what you're effectively telling the system, which is the operating system, is will you pause there for a minute so that the human has a time to see has time to see what's actually happening. OK, and the final thing we have in that is the return zero to say we got to the end. Everything ran fine. We're returning a zero to the operating system. OK, so they're the basics of the um, of the C program. The important things to remember, just to recap. There's only one main function. You can't have more than one of them in any given program. So there's just one and everything else must either be called from main 
or call from something that's called from something that's called from main and you can go lo uh, lots of ways down but if if there isn't some link between that all the way back to main it won't get called it won't happen so the program starts at the first opening brace of main and closes at the uh, the, the closing one um, remember that if you do this um, int main void okay this int main void what you're saying is that you're going to return an integer to the operating system that sent it and uh, for that uh, you need to return a zero at the bottom okay and that's what you'll be doing in most of your cases so uh, just get used to that and the last thing then that we just had in this very simple program was we wanted to report something to the user in other words pop it up on the screen we used a standard input output library function called the printf and uh, that allows us to print things on the screen and i'll give you more in a little video on the printf uh, later okay so we're going to finish at that